So tonight I want to talk to you about the prayer of agreement. We're going to go deep on this, especially if you're a business owner. Um, we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk about prayer tonight. We're going to talk about it Sunday. And it's very exciting. I want to teach you how to grow your business, how to grow your life through the prayer of agreement. I'm going to show you a document after a while, hopefully. Worst case scenario, I'll put them on Instagram and you can screenshot it because you can use this document that Nicole made for us. And it changed, um, it changed everything. Everything that we got, we got from this document. But first, we'll, we'll go to Ephesians 6, verse 18. Ephesians 6, 18. And um, big shout out to the media team. They do so good, man. It's, they're volunteers, and they put it up. And you guys don't even have to bring your Bible. Y'all lazy. You're like, put it on screen, Linda. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer. Everybody shout all prayer. And supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with perseverance and supplication with all saints, praying always with all prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. There's a prayer of praise, prayer of forgiveness, prayer of petition, prayer of agreement, prayer of intercession. There's a lot of different types of prayers, just like there's a lot of doctors. You got chiropractors. You got, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss with this. You got brain surgeons. You got orthodontists. You got gynecologists. How many of y'all don't want the gynecologist doing brain surgery on you? <laughs> you don't want the proctologist being, you got, it's a whole, there's all kinds of parts and there's all kinds of doctors playing different parts where well, there are different types of prayer. And so when you learn to be skillful with prayer, you can build your business, you can build your life, you can do, you can have uh, your, your, just your own uh, ecosystem of heaven in your life. We know there's the, 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 the prayer that we saw demonstrated by Jesus himself in Matthew 6. It said, pray therefore like this, verse 9. Pray therefore like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He begins to go through it. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. It's talking about forgiving people. It goes through this whole list of, that's a, that's a prayer that you can pray pray daily. There's the Ephesian prayer that, that Paul taught us. There's just so many, so many prayers. But the one I'm going for tonight is the prayer of agreement. So let's go to Philippians 4 verse 6 before we get into this. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to your rich aunt. Let your requests be known to who? God. God. Come on, St. Louis, to who? God. God. So when you're praying, you're letting your requests be known to God, and then God will do in the secret place and move currency. He'll, he'll set up deals. There are all kinds of crazy things will happen in your favor, especially when you, when you do this, where the Bible said, believe you the prophets and so shall you prosper. So I operate in that prophetic gift. So if I said it's miracle, the Lord told me uh, it's miracle May, then you ought to go, I believe that. And then if I tell you that, you know, through numerology, that five means grace and favor, and it's the fifth month, you ought to go, and hey, there's just more proof right there. And if it's the tenth day, that's five and five. Even if you just went to kindergarten, you can handle this deal, right? So you got five and five, and that means why? Ten. And then miracles are happening. I told you that before uh, this whole, you know, and I know some people uh, don't like to talk about this, but God, God doesn't like killing. The devil kills. So here in America, on Miracle May, something that I didn't even think could happen. All of a sudden, God now gets and says, hey, you know, you can get an abortion, but you're just not going to do it here. That's a miracle. And again, it gets quiet because you're like, oh, my gosh, I hope I don't make a Democrat mad or a Republican mad. Or, you know what? You ought to not make God mad. And God loves people. Okay? I know you're like, oh, man, they might bomb us. They might shoot at us. Well, they're killing that kid. So that's a whole thing. It's just miracles. So you ought to believe it. So, there's that. Every time I say it, I feel this thing to where I go, man, I don't know, should I say that or not say that? But I mean, I just can't, I, I gotta say it. I just gotta say it. I don't, if we're gonna, if we're just like playing a political church, then I quit. I just like, I quit. Like, take my cards and I quit because I just wanna preach the Bible. When I get to heaven, I want God to go, well done, that good and faithful service. Not like, what a wuss. You know, I wanna let you in, but the fact is, you didn't have what it takes. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, somebody ought to give it up for, for, for uh, honoring God. 
<laughs> Matthew 18, verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, I say unto you, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Here's the key verse, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that you shall ask, it shall be done for them uh, of the government. Who's the guy that bought Twitter? I forget his name. Owns Tesla. Elon. 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 You know, everybody know Elon got money. Or at least he had money. He bought Twitter. He didn't know. You could get it for free. I did. You could sign up for it for free. So you put emphasis on the Father's going to do it if you agree on earth. So here we are. How many of y'all are on earth? Raise your hand. On, uh, on earth. You're here. We got that. Two of you. You don't even have to be married. You can just be somebody that you're in a small group with. Two of you shall agree. Agree. That's the prayer of agreement. I want you to shout it with me. The prayer of agreement. Shout it again. Why? The prayer of agreement. So the prayer of agreement looks like this. Very easy. You just read that right there if you can read. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth. So let's agree. So me and Nicole, the way we started this years ago, we grab each other's hands. We say, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Two of us right here are agreeing on earth. We're asking the Father in the name of Jesus to give us whatever it was. It comes to mind right now because of this. Uh, maybe we could put up, I don't know if I sent you guys that, I texted you guys like this little screenshot, I think, of the agreement. So Nicole did this. So it's a contract of agreement. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth shall harmonize together, make symphony together, this is the Amplified Bible. Whatever, anything and everything that you may ask, it'll come to pass and be done of the Father which is in heaven. Uh, for wherever two of you are gathered, drawn together, my followers unto me in my name, I am in the midst. And so today, we would put today, whatever year it was, we agree that we've got such and such. And then we would sign through the power of attorney, the name of Jesus. So I would sign or Nicole would sign. We both have power of attorney. Because what Jesus just said, whatever we bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth should be loose in heaven. So if he said that, then we can take this legal document and go, we have the power of attorney. Like all our houses and stuff, it ain't owned through us. You never, you can't find our house because it's buried in an LLC and there's an attorney somewhere. And I don't want even to tell you what state he's at. And so if there's any dues due or there's any fees done, it all goes through the attorney and you probably can't sue me. You got to try to find the LLC to sue me. And then when you figure out what's up, even the church is like, try to break up each church. So if you sue one church, you can't sue all church. In fact, TD Jakes even got the parking lot broke down. So if you fall down on this parking spot, you can't sue for the whole church. You got to sue for that church because it's, a, it's just, it's a legal thing. Well, this is a legal contract here. Put it up again. They take it down like it's nasty. So today, Nicole and I agree, and we would agree that we're going to buy this piece of property. Now, we were not pastors at the time. We, we helped my dad. But there was a particular, uh, that we, <laughs> I don't know why I keep thinking of this. Uh, it, there was a Jaguar Vandenplatz. And this is Jaguar Vonnaplot was a car we thought we wanted until we got it. But we did get it, and we got it with that piece of paper. We said, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we're coming into agreement that we want a Jaguar Vonnaplot. And this Jaguar, years and years ago, it had these little things like table trays like an airplane, and they would fold down in the back, you know, just in case you ever want to drive around and eat your Big Mac in the back of the car. You got a cool little table. It's just a, it's a pimped out car. We like wanted that car. Father, we just thank you. We got it. In Jesus' name, we're going to find a good deal on it. We went through the whole deal, did the power of attorney. It wasn't long at all until we got a great deal on the car. We got the car. And it was beautiful. Everybody's like, oh, man, look at that car. Paint job, everything. I mean, it was just unbelievable. You just felt so good. In fact, when you drive it, you kind of just kind of slip down on the seat. And you're just like, man, it was just, it was just I felt the spirit of pride come on me. Then it started having, you know, things that those kind of cars do. You know, it's like, I think the brake sensors, you know, they needed new brake sensors, like $3,800. This is $2,800. And so then we wrote up a new one. So, God, we believe that you're going to help us sell this Jaguar <laughs> Vandenfly. I promise to God. 
I promise you. Nicole, am I telling the truth? This is the truth, man. And so we, we got it because the Lord's like, you want it? I'll give it to you. Anybody ever done that for your kids? You're like, all right, I'll buy it, but I'm just telling you it's a piece of junk, but if that's what you want. Come on, have you ever done that for your kids? You're like, it's just, it's just gonna, as soon as it gets wet, it's trash. But the Lord just, he would do it. And it was, a, it was a sign. I remember that one. That one always stuck out because we believed to get it, and then we believed to sell it. Bobcat, we own property. And getting into the details of this, how many of y'all interested in this? Yeah, yeah. So, so it says here, again, I tell you, if any two of you on earth, harmonize. I, w- I want to focus on that harmonize for a minute. Harmonize. Harmonize. Being in harmony with one another. Now, here's what will break the contract. The Bible said that the servant of the Lord must not strive. The Bible said that you got to walk in love. We know from the Ephesians prayer, or I mean the Lord's prayer, where it said, Our Father, who in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, we forgive our debtors, lead us out of temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the night is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. That all those things that are in there are in there for a reason. When he said, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, that is an anti strife term. So we got to forgive people because if we don't forgive them, our faith will not work because we're out of love because faith worketh by love. Flashlight worketh by batteries. Phone worketh by internet. Your phone, it's going to go dead if you don't plug it in. Anybody know that? Anybody ever got up in the morning like, oh my gosh, my phone didn't charge. I got to stay home. We keep little battery packs, don't we? Come on, raise your hand right now. If you got good, I got a little John, Don's there in St. Louis tonight. Don, the other night, my phone was almost dead. He said, watch this. And he pulled out this like car battery charger out of his pants and plugged it in. He's like, look, this is a turbo charger, man. And my phone was smoking in five minutes. Was like, <laughs> but man, he ain't taking a chance on the phone. He ain't doing it. But faith works by love. So here's where people fail to receive. They're like, God, I'm going to church. I thank you, Lord. It's pastor said it's a miracle May. It's the fifth month. It's the tenth day. And then on the way out, they're like, I'm going to cut you. I swear I'm going to kill him when I get out. So everything you prayed just went out the door. Raise your hand if it's making sense. So if we're going to receive by faith, if we're going to receive God's goodness, if we're going to do the will of the Lord, then we've got to be doing it the way God wants to do it. That's how we got everything we got. Through prayer, through supplication, and then that harmonize again. They keep taking it down like it's nudity. Let's leave it up. Just put it back up again. The harmonize. There you go. They're so funny. Harmonize. Symphony together. Symphony together. Harmonize. One of the ways your marriage will be better, your life will be better, is when you really are believing God, you won't go to bed and get out of harmony. Because you're like, man, I got the vision up there. I got the picture of the Vandenplat. I got the picture of the house. Or I got the picture of the clean bill of health. Whatever it is, you got the vision. Because the, the, the Bible said to write the vision and make it plain so you can run with it. So if your vision isn't super strong about the business you want to grow, about the health you want to achieve, about the dreams, whatever it is, it's got to be so strong that it goes, I'm not going to eat that because I got the vision. My body's going to look like Brad Pitt's. I lost you on that one. <laughs> so you've cut your head off and you've, you've photoshopped whoever's body and you're like, I'm going to look like that. And if you keep looking at that and somebody gives you a, a uh, let's just say a Krispy Kreme donut and you go, if your vision's not strong, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> y'all know I'm telling you the truth right now. But when your vision is strong, you know, I'm going to get the house. We're going to start the business. So we got to harmonize. So you and your wife are getting into it over stupid stuff. Because the devil come and just try to get your tones off. He'll try to get them. Well, what I meant was, because the fact is you love that person so much that other people could say stuff. Other people could say stuff to me and it wouldn't bother me. But when Nicole says it, because I love her and I want her to think I'm the man. He's the guy. He's my hero. He's the, he's a stud. He's 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 awesome. Yeah. She's saying amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing a good job. So when, when I come off the stage, if she goes, man, that was deep revelation. You crushed it. I go. 
You can tell me it's great, and I'm like, they're a liar. They're lying to me right now. They're just lying. But Nicole, when Nicole says it, it has. So the enemy will use that to make you guys fight with one another. St. Louis, there still is an audience here, I swear to you. They're here. So we've got to say, no, we're not falling for that. So what, what we do is we'd say, you know what, Nicole, I, 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 I was sharp with you. I shouldn't have said that. I'm really not even sorry, but I really do want the Jaguar. <laughs> I'm being real with you right now. Because sometimes the vision is so strong. Like with me, my dad used to tell me, he said, uh, um, when you have to believe God every week, it just keeps you straight. If you had millions of dollars in the bank, you'd be like, screw that. I'm going to slap that guy. I'm going to do what I want to do. But when you have to go like, I've got to have $300,000 this week to pay the bills, you tend to go, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you grace, God. I thank you, Lord, that you're meeting my needs today, God. If you don't do it, I don't know what in the world's going to do. So remember, David said this. He said it was good that I was afflicted. So some of you tonight, when you go home and you put gas in the car and it's $1,900, this is good for you because you go, God, you're going to have to make a way, God. God. God, you've got to make a way. It's saying $99, $102. God, you got to do it. That's good for you. Back, you know, a year or two ago when it was like $40 to fill up your car, you're like, I don't need Jesus. But now you need him. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. Simple enough. You guys can take it down. Thank you. I was just razzing you guys so much. Verse 19, one more time. It says, and again, I tell you. If two of you shall agree on earth to such and anything that you shall ask, you ask the Father. Now, here's what prayer is not. Prayer is not getting around your, your uh, family members or even a small group, and you're getting ready to pray. And you say, God, I just, come here, Byron. I want to hold your hand because you're so muscular. <laughs> so we're in a group. God, I thank you, Lord, that, God, you're going to meet our needs, God. God, I thank you that you're getting ready to pay my car payment of $477.68. God, I thank you that my internet bill is $119.99. And, God, I thank you that you're going to do that because you know Byron's got money. You can tell by the way he dresses. God, I thank you, Lord, right now, God. You know that I do not have the money. And, God, if you could give me a gas card, God, I know, God. No, you're trying to say that for Byron. You're trying to say that for your boss. You're trying to say that for your rich uncle. But there's nobody that can take care of you like God. He's got streets of gold, gates of pearl. Somebody ought to give God praise today. This is how you, this is how you get ahead. This is how you grow your business. But we got to be in alignment with the assignments that's on our life. So you, I want you to write this down. God will never give you any specific direction until you follow his general direction. I'm going to say it again slowly. God will never give you any specific direction until you follow his general direction. So you open up the general direction. You go to church because the Lord said, um, forsake not the assemblies of yourself together. When the evil day approaches, do it all the more. That's what God said. Pretty evil day out here. So we need to do it all the more. That's general direction. Then you do that, you go to church, and the Lord says, do this, do that, pull that lever, drop that wall, da, da, da. All that gives you the information, the real specific direction on what to do. Because God doesn't run chaos. You never know what the Lord's going to do. He knows what he's going to do. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is consistent. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning when you wake up, the sun is going to come up, I promise you. Prophetically, I feel it in my spirit. I tell you by the Holy Ghost, tomorrow the sun is coming up on the east side and it's going to lay back down to rest tomorrow in the west. I just know it. Mark it in your day book prophetically. In fact, even furthermore, I tell you tomorrow's Wednesday. <laughs> the next day I feel prophetically is Thursday. In fact, every day ends in Y. Come on, somebody. I just sense it in my... The Holy Ghost didn't tell you that. You just know it because God is consistent. Well, he's consistent with his word. So if you'll be consistent with the word and you follow his general direction, so like in your business, if you wonder why your business isn't blessed, well, you're not tithing. Tithing means the first, not the last, the first 10%. So I've watched people that have a lot of money. Man, I've, seen, I've been doing this a while now. So I've seen people with a whole lot of money end up with no money. 
Then I've watched people with no money end up with a whole lot of money. It's just kind of interesting how that happens. But the Bible says a fool, if you read the Bible, it says a fool and his money will soon depart. So they got no money because they did not follow the direction that the Lord uh, has for you. Lord speaking to me right now, so I'm listening to that and then talking to you. Okay. So I, I want to go down that uh, again for one minute. If you're married or you want to be married, if you're married and you don't want to be married, <laughs> that was just me on the last part. I just thought I was saying Maybe the last part is because you're not walking in love. It's been a while since you went out, turned the phone off and said, girl, remember when they used to talk in songs? Girl, you never looked that good. I say we bring talking back, right? When I look into your eyes, I see a Big Mac quarter pounder and fries. So the Holy Spirit will tell you, hey, take your wife out to dinner tonight and leave your phone in the car. My phone. Oh, God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit might tell you that. Get real quiet. You're like, I ain't leaving my phone, dog. That's where I draw my line. <laughs> okay, I got you. But the Holy Spirit of God will tell you things that will make your marriage better so that you get along, because if you can get along and you can walk in love, you say, why are you making such a big deal out of walking in love? I'm just telling you, I know God. I know when people tell me, God told me that. I'm like, I know he didn't tell you that because I know God. And that ain't something he would say. I just know God. I've been working for this joker for a long time. I can tell you when it, he ain't saying that. I just know it. He didn't tell you that. The word didn't line up with that. And I know him well enough to know he ain't saying that. And if you get to know him, you'll know he will never step outside his word and tell you, oh, God's going to bless me. And while I, you know, I'm going to be married to my wife, but God blessed me and gave me devil from my trouble and gave me a girlfriend. That, that ain't God. <laughs> it got quiet, but I want to amen on that right now. That is not God. Like it's a year of favor. That ain't favor. <laughs> That's your flesh. You're out of control and you're going to die as soon as she finds out about it. <laughs> You a dead man. You're going to need your phone to call 911. <laughs> but when you walk in love, whatever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he'll give it to you. So it may be blocking your blessing. The Lord won't leave me alone about this. Harmonize. When I was a little kid, long time ago, Many, many moons ago. Me and my brother, Jamie, we would get in fights and my dad was believing God just to get gas money in the motor home to go where we needed to preach. And we'd get in fights and we were believing God for things. Remember, how many of y'all heard my orange bike story, right? Believing God for an orange bike, high handlebars, blah, 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 going through it all. And then I'd get in a fight with Jamie and I'm like eight years old. My dad said, now, your, the angels were going to get your bike and they were bringing it and then you got in strife and then they took the bike and they took it back. And I'd go, I need to kill that joker, man. He's stopping my blessing, <laughs> stopping my flow. But see, as a little boy, my dad was teaching me what the word says. That's why I love Will and all of our incredible faith kids. I mean, the team is unbelievable. We have the smartest people teaching their kids. They're not in there just drawing pictures. They're teaching them this stuff, the strategies, the insights, the concepts. So you'll have little superhumans. You know what they need more than a vaccine? They need to hear the word of God. You know what they need more than, than, than good food? They need to hear the word of God. Well, I don't want to bring my kid. It's, a, it's nine o'clock at night. Well, this is the smartest thing you could do for that joker. Make them late for school, but don't make them a fool because if they're going to be cool, they're going to come to church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you got to listen to your spirit and you got to cut out the strife. Right now, in America, there's massive strife on TV all the time. All the news, 
and strife. Remember when late night talk shows were kind of funny? Johnny Carson, Ed McMahon, Dave Letterman. It wasn't political. It was just like, hey, uh, I don't know. Uh, what's the guy's name? Bruce, Bruce Willis is coming out with Die Hard 99. <laughs> and so Bruce would get on the show, and you would see the previous Die Hard 98, and then he would tell you about Die Hard 99, and then this whole thing was like, man, I want to go see that movie. These shows were designed to promote you know, movies or promote things. Now it's all political. Every show is a news show. This is, I'm not, I don't care because I don't watch the crap. I just turn it on for a minute and go, what's the fool that be watching this? Because this ain't funny at all. This is an agenda. It is teaching. It is hackma pounding in. I'm training them the way to think and I'm training them how to be. And then I go over here and go, man, I'd just a lot rather watch Brother Copeland go, turn with me to Mark 11, 23 and 24. Because this will give you information that will change your life. If you keep watching what everybody else is watching, and so now you spend all your free time touching your phone 1,600 times a day, watching Netflix, and you know every show that's on Netflix because you binge Netflix, you got a problem. You need to get rid of Netflix. Just get, just get rid of it for a while. Just turn it off. And I know you're like, I don't pay. I actually got the subscription for my uncle's buddy, and I use his password. It ain't about paying. It's about you're wasting your life getting information that's not doing anything to make Make your life better and you're just as dumb today as you were yesterday somebody ought to help me right now but if you go to church and hear this stuff you can literally change the, your your health you can make cancer go away mm -hmm. Matthew 21 verse 13 says and he said unto them it is written this is Jesus my house shall be called the house of prayer but you've made it a den of thieves Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he hungered. That's really good. He's like, man, I need some Chick-fil-A. He saw a fig tree on the way. It was a drive-thru. He went up there and he found nothing on it because there was a supply chain issue. There was leaves only, but he said unto it, let no fruit grow here hence forever. The fig tree withered up, withered away. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled How soon the fig tree withered away. Jesus said, verse 21, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and shall not doubt, you shall not do this which is done of the fig tree, but you will say unto a mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea. And whatever things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you receive it, you shall have it. Jesus walking down the road, sees a fig tree. It said, I'm a Christian. I look like a Christian. It looked like a Christian, but it wasn't really a Christian. They look like they got money, but they really ain't got money. They look like they're whole, but they're really not whole. It's not the thing that you possess. It's the thing that possesses you. What is possessing you, by the way? So now you get that information on the inside of you, and you go, Jesus said, hey, I curse it. That was prayer. That was a prayer. He forbid that tree to ever produce again. Because you're faking, you're fronting. Here's what God, God loves all people. But the only person God will expose is the hypocrite. If you're a hypocrite, he'll expose you. You act like you're saved, you're really not saved. I've seen it happen so many times with players. But by the way, you never, the Bible said this, be sure your sin shall find you out. So I'm just here to tell you, the thing that you're doing that you don't think you're going to get caught doing, you're just going to get caught. Got quiet again here. I promise you they're here. I'll just tell you, you're going to get caught. Why? Well, word said so. I wish there was, I'd love to get my Bible in like a little, uh, like just a little razor knife and just cut parts out. Like, I don't like that part. I don't like that part. And I just want to keep this part. You know, I know the plans I have for you, the price for you. I like that part. Yeah. Ever have seen the price that's forsaken? I like that part. You yeah. know, when your brother offends you, you know, turn the other cheek. Don't like that part. <laughs> There's so much stuff I wouldn't want in there. But the fact is, it's all true. Right. I'm 52 years old, and I'm just telling you, every bit of it. All that is just true. The party's going to bless you? True. For sure, the wages of sin is death? True. Yeah. But it didn't kill me. Well, your marriage died, though. 
your dream died. All the stuff you were believing God for with that prayer of agreement, that died because you were in strife and in sin because God can't just bless it. I'm almost done, which is really sad for you because there's so much in me. But I know you got to go watch uh, Yellowstone and (laughs) Idol and get caught up on your late night with Jimmy. (laughs) This would change your life. If you'll learn this and you'll say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just get in the Word. I'm going to be a Tuesday night person. I'm going to be a person who listens to the podcast over and over. I'm just going to just, I'm just going to OD on the word. I'm just going to get so full of the word that when you squeeze me, faith comes out. Anybody ever done this? I've done this to where got too fleshy, too tired, hurt, you know, hung out with the wrong people. And all of a sudden something happened and a curse word came out of your mouth. I'm looking for a show of hands. I want to see who this is. (laughs) Somebody like, hell no. Let's try that again, liar. How many of y'all have ever been surprised? Like, oh, glad nobody was around then. Glad my mic was off. Uh Uh-huh. Been hanging around the wrong people. Been hearing the wrong thing. Because out of the abundance of the heart, uh uh-huh, the mouth speaks. But man, you you know, how many of y'all think if you, Brother Copeland, you know, is... (laughs) He's 80, 85, right? And he told us, he said, I just bought a new motorcycle. He's 85. He's telling me, I just bought a new motorcycle the other day. I loved it. He said, uh, I was in there buying the five-year extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you're not doing the math on this. There's an 85-year-old guy. <laughs> on TV, the 85 year old guy got a little walker. I tell you, I hope right now, if you call right now, we can get you on this truck. Not him. He's like, I want the extended warranty. <laughs> 85 needs a five year extended warranty. So if this guy, the motorcycle kind of falls over, maybe, you know, it's falling over. I'm not saying it did, but if it did, how many of y'all can't really see it kind of falling over? He's losing control of it and he starts letting out curse words. How many of y'all don't see that? You don't know Brother Couple. Let's talk about Joyce Meyer. You love Joyce. Okay, so how many of y'all see Joyce? Joyce Meyer. Let's go there, friend. Here's Joyce. And so Joyce, I don't know what she's doing right now. Okay, she, she goes outside. Dave's got the golf clubs, and they're falling out on her. And you hear her go, beep, 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 beep. Dave, beep, beep. How many of y'all ain't seeing that? Raise your hand. It's hilarious to you. You're laughing because you know that ain't happening. Wonder why. Bet she's not watching what you're watching. Bet she's not thinking what you're thinking. Bet she's not saying what you're saying. So what what am I saying? I'm saying you're smart for being here tonight. I'm saying you're smart for getting to small groups. They start here in a couple weeks. You know, I'll go next time. No, no, no. The, you will be who you're around. Some of the smartest people at our church, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, even people with a, I was talking to a guy, a couple of guys the last few weeks that have checkered past, but some of these guys that had checkered past, you're like, oh, wouldn't hang around him, he's got a checkered past. These are some of the smartest jokers you've ever seen in your life. Like, so, some, of even, some of these drug dealers on the corner, they're incredible business guys. Some of these young dudes, they're entrepreneurs, they're marketers, they understand supply and chain, right? They, they understand public relations. Like these jokers, like they understand style and fashion. Come on, somebody understand. These dudes are smart. They didn't get the education and they might do it, be doing it wrong. But these dudes, you need to tap into what some of these dudes are doing. Right. Y'all sitting there like, I went to college and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Got your little pants hanging out. I'll tell you. Man, man. No, 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 no. Get around the right people. So, so the groups are getting ready to get it connected. Connect in a group. And if we don't have a group, you need to start a group. In fact, if you've went to a couple groups, it's time for you to start a group because we got to reach down. And this information tonight, I got a question. How many of y'all, this information tonight was very informational for you? And you're like, these are tools. I can use it. Raise your hand. Should be everybody. Okay, so now 
that information. I reach down. I don't need to do this. In fact, by the way, we don't even use this contract anymore because we've elevated past that. Me and her just joined hands. It might be even we'll just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that we're going to get that property in Fairview Heights, uh, Illinois, and we're going to get for this. Father, we thank you that as that property is ours. We just recently bought another house. We said whatever we bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We believe that that property is ours, so we have put our feet on it. We're not, and these people are wanting to sell it, so we believe any offers that come in, they will deny them because this is our property in the name of Jesus. And then we had to get along until the contract was done. Okay? And then we'll have to get along again because the payment's going to come due. But my point is, is that if I'm giving you this information and it's helping you, you need to start a group. Everybody here, if you just come to the church to bless me, help me, feed me, you need to grow up in grace and teach people the gifts and the talents that you've learned. And you put those together and all of a sudden it changes everything. Last scripture, go ahead and stand with me, but I want you to pay attention to this. Isaiah 26, gang, it says, in this day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, and God will appoint salvation as our walls and bulwarks. Open our gates with the righteousness, and and that the righteousness, that the righteous nation which keeps truth may enter in. The righteous nation. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. I want to focus in on that righteous nation. Our nation of the United States of America, where we live, and you might be watching around the world. But tonight I'm in the United States of America. This is the country in which I was born. It is the country which I have my citizen, my, my, my citizenship from. Like we travel abroad and do mission work all over the world, and my passport says I am from the United States of America. This nation is not doing righteous things. So we can curse the nation, we can watch the news, or we can make news happen. By getting up in the morning and saying, hey, hi, God, it's me again. You start reading that information with Nicole. You're praying on, you know, on Wait, Pray, Slay on Thursdays. And we're praying together corporately. But then every day you get up and you say, Father, I decree and declare that this nation is blessed. God, you'll, you'll remove kings. You'll put the right people in power. God, I thank you that we want what you want in this country. God, we thank you, Lord, that we, we don't want to kill babies. God, don't put that on me. I, I didn't kill no babies. God, we don't want to say all these things that are anti-God, scriptural God. God, I thank you that I'm going to raise my children in the admonition of the Lord. And this country is going to be strong because most of the countries of the world need to be evangelized. And they're only going to be evangelized through people, most likely. We are the mission field. We are the missionaries of the world. So if if America goes down and continues to be unrighteous, then our, our country won't be blessed. So we can either curse it or we can go to church and we can get in groups and we can pray prayers of binding and loosing. You can make a contract and say, here's what's going to happen in our legislation. Here's what's going to happen in our courts. Here's what's going to happen in my subdivision. Are you, are you seeing what I'm saying? We're going to go deeper on this on Sunday. Stretch your hands toward me here and there in St. Louis. God, I thank you, Lord, for what you did tonight. God, we started this service worshiping and praising you. We started singing Miracles When You Move, such an easy thing for you to do. God, tonight we learned tools that we can put in our hands. Father, that we could just grab a hold of some mean potatoes and say, this this will this will cause me to have more chiropractic centers. This will this will cause me to have more shops. I'll be able to get the tools and equipment, the bobcat, the track hoe, whatever it is that they're needing. God, the, the, the dental office, the house. This economy has nothing to do with us. We'll be able to buy houses cheap. There's no deals to be had. Well, for them, but for us, no, we're going to get the right deal. The right house is coming to us probably this month because it's May. And, you know, so it's the fifth month of grace and favor. It's miracle May. Yeah, we have a strong city. God, we pray for the cities that we, I'm responsible for and pastor are Palm Beach County and St. Louis County. And I take authority right now over Palm Beach County. And I take authority over St. Louis County. And I thank you, Lord, that we're free from murders. We're free from terrorism. We're free from tornadoes. We're free from hurricanes. We declare and decree the blood of Jesus over our states that we're in charge of. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. Father, I pray that every business of ours, that people that are tithers, they're tithing not only on their salaries, but they're tithing off their business. God, you said you would command 
the blessing on their life and that you would rebuke the devourer. God, we're not people that just get excited and start going to church and then let it fall off. We stay excited. Here, I've been saved so long. I don't know, it's just crazy, but I'm still excited today as I, I was 25, 30 years ago because, God, I'm excited that you kept me. I'm going to follow those that followed Christ that are 85 by an extended warranties. God, I pray for health over our church, that our, our church is free from uh, diseases, man-made diseases, plagues, according to Psalms 91, no plague, COVID, or any other kind of bacteria. It'll just fall off of us because we are people of God, and we walk in love. And perfect love casts out all fear. I decree and declare over their marriages that their marriages are healed and they're happy together. And their kids are happy. And their lives are fully supplied. And God, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have already done it. And we're going to step into that in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen.